Okay, so we're just starting up, but we're, we're searching for a subject to come and have a seat, come and get involved. Give us a couple of minutes. This, this is a perfect way to overcome shyness. I used to be shy, honestly. It's true. Uh, come and have a seat. Um, so we've got, um, let's just get some names. What's your name? Simon. Simon and what's your name? Mark. Mark and Rick. Rick. Um, come and get involved. Come and have a seat for a couple of minutes. Um, we just started up this session, so we don't have a subject yet. Uh, you want to talk about homeless? Yes. What do you want to say? About why can't no one at homes around Coventry? Why are there no homes in Coventry? What, why, what, what is that? Why, why do people not care about homeless? Yes. What's the question? Yes, because they're all from with druggies. Okay, so people don't care about homeless people because they think they're all druggies. They're all druggies. Okay, all right. Um, let's just get. S so, uh, so we've got um, Simon, Mark. What was it? Matthew. Matthew, Rick, I'm Mikey. Um, is anyone here from Coventry? Yes. You're from yeah, Coventry. Study in Coventry. You study in Coventry. Yeah. Okay. You're from Coventry. Do you think that's true? Do you think people don't care about homeless people in um, Coventry? Sometimes, because. I notice a few times people just walk away from homeless people because they don't yeah. know if they are people yeah. that are on drugs or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes when they've asked for money and that, people just yeah. think they're just going out to buy pots or anything. Yeah. And it's a bit of a shame. That, well, that, well, yeah. yeah. 21 years, yeah. I've been five and a half months clean. Yeah. I mean, does and it... People still look at me as I'm a shit or I'm a smackhead or I'm a crackhead, but I'm not. Okay. Are you, what do you think about the attitude? We're talking about uh, commentaries, attitude to homeless people, mm -hmm. uh, and also I think there's another thing being brought up here: is what do we think about people that have got a drug issue? Are, are we, yeah, or did have a drug issue, or even those that not necessarily you, but anyone that's got a drug issue? Are we treating them in the right way? Because I think from what you're saying is they're not. They need help, not looked at as if they're shit on the floor. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think um, people are focused on their success. What you what you just said yeah. before, but um, I think we need more compassion. But but it comes everywhere. Yeah. There, there's enough housing in Coventry. Hang on, a second, there's enough there's enough resources. There's enough housing in Coventry, but it's yeah. privately owned. Right. And and it's not being given to the people. It's it's being yeah. It's it's standing. F um, yeah. Closed up unused, unpaid for, right. the landlords so cannot be found, houses in, there's, in there's so many and, and as a yeah. part of Occupy we tried retaking these homes, right. we, we've made community centres, we've been teaching art, we've been talking about drug addictions, yeah. um, but we've been stopped and we've been, we've been prosecuted for that because right. suddenly after 30 years they yeah. found the landlord, the landlord is unhappy about this even though the building was Empty. derelict yeah. for 15 years. Yeah. And um, yeah. but but we we are doing things. We are yeah. doing thing. I'm, uh, things. I'm talking to homeless people. Yeah. Um, every winter we organise Operation Safe Winter. Right. Um, by by collective. Yeah. Where we give give we. Every winter yeah. I give yeah. I I, I, uh, I try to give out as many gloves, hats, yeah. Yeah. and some food. Yeah. And dog food and and, yeah. and everything. So. Uh, yeah. and, and I think we need Let's to talk to our friends about that and start spreading the message. Yeah. And now I have to go back to work. Thanks okay, again. well, that uh, sounds like you're doing a lot. Let's, I think we should give Shimon a bit of a round of applause for all that stuff he's doing. Thanks. But uh, does he represent the average Coventry person when it comes to his attitude to homeless people? Uh, uh, everything, they're all druggies. Okay. Why? Should it, should it matter if someone's got... A drug problem no, or not? No, he, he shouldn't know because they need help. That's why they're right there out there, but you're yeah. asking for help. Yeah, okay. So, Matt, hello. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, just, I mean, maybe just like stay for a minute and see how it goes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, maybe by talking it through, it, yeah, there, yeah, go on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all right. Um, it's just some people just get a perception of what homelessness or yeah. drugness is here. Because yeah. sometimes it's all filtered by TV or stuff. But yeah. in reality, people have genuinely lost their homes. And council, I don't think, sometimes yeah. are yeah. helping. Don't you think we're asking for help? Yeah, so actually what you're asking for, more than money, Men is actually more help. More mentors uh, can say, yeah, look, I can do this for you, I can do that for you. 
but you've got to do this. Yeah. So it's a kind of bar it's a kind it's of bargain. It's not a blackmail. It's a it's a like a bargain, maybe. Someone needs. Yeah. A lot of people ain't got mums. A lot of people ain't got dads. Yeah. My dad's got dementia. He's in a care home. Yeah. It's sometimes he don't even know who I am. Yeah. I've got four sisters. Yeah. But they just seem to rob my dad. And I can't be asked for them. Yeah. But it's more mentors and more people to say, look, Yeah. you're homeless. You're a druggie. I've been mean, five and a half minutes clean, but a lot of people in town, they need mentors. Someone can say, look. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you a second like. So we're talking about homelessness. Oh, Marcus, go, okay, go, well, thank, thank go, you. Go, 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 go. Have you got a final thought before you go? Help. Help. Yeah. I mean, that's a, I think that's a really good point. That is, you know, homeless people need help. They're sitting there saying, we need help, not we need money, we need fucking help. They need help. Sorry. Okay, well, that's a strong, it's a strong point. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Um, Okay, so where do we go from that? Is there a Radio, please think. Absolutely, food. That's food for thought. Is there a compassion deficit? Are we lacking compassion? Do we lack an understanding? Also, uh, I think people generalise. Yeah. Uh, not just homelessness. A lot yeah. of things people just generalise about yeah. someone or see someone and they instantly have a sort of yeah. general idea about them, even though they don't know them or haven't talked to them or anything like that. Yeah. I guess it also comes back to what we were talking about. So we're about earlier. with the racism, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So we, we're too quick to judge in a way ab about somebody. Yeah. Putting, one person, putting everyone in like one bracket kind of yeah. thing. It's like, well, they're this. Yeah. So they, I thought they're all like this, basically. And it's, yeah. Which is it's just very general. Yeah, general. Okay. Are, are we judging people too much? Come and have a seat on the table of chat. Is there a lack of compassion in Coventry? Do you think? Are we too quick to judge? That's what we're talking about at the moment. Is it? It's not just commentary, says Rick. Where else is it? <laughs> it's everywhere. That's everywhere, right. everywhere. Okay. Um, Matt, yeah. <laughs> Again, um, it's just stereotyping sometimes yeah. when it comes to the homeless. Yeah. It's just a bit of a shame, really, um, that you see yeah. all these shelters, you see everything, yeah. and yet you yeah. see them get turned away half the time. So you don't yeah. see. There are plenty of old houses in Coventry that aren't even being used or anywhere else and they're not being used by the council to fund for anything to, or they're not being in use just for the homeless. They're just yeah. being... And if you want to use the houses, they put up extraordinary prices to use yeah. them, yeah. which is a shame. Yeah. And the funding for renovating all of these things, it's, it's yeah. just a shame, really. And that homeless people have to beg. We've got a new face at the table. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this is Talkie Okie, it's a pop-up talk show. Um, we drive around in the van, and today we're here at Coventry Cathedral. We've got Rick, we've got Matt, and Mikey, what's your name? My name is Rich. Rich? Rich, yes. Um, at the moment we're talking about, we had a homeless guy on the table, and he's saying, when you see homeless people, actually, what they need more than anything else is help. And I, I got the feeling it, it meant sort of some kind of compassion that we may be lacking compassion, um, or maybe he felt that he was being judged as just another kind of drug addict on the street. So what we're talking about now is, what can we do to help homeless people? Is it about actually getting the council to, to, um, to create more homes? Is it about actually just somehow showing them some kind of compassion? That's what we're talking about at the moment. Uh, have you got any views on this at the moment? or? Not really. Um, okay, um, I'm, I'm not so um, educated about yeah. that aspect, but yeah. um, I feel there should be the, the 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 government should have like care homes for them. Yeah. Provide them with certain basic um, services. Yeah. Um, yeah. Water, food, good um, good housing facilities. Yeah. And um, good health structures. Yeah. It would be very um, dehumanizing for human beings to sit down on the street begging yeah. for a coin yeah yeah and except you don't have like a human feeling if you can't resonate with them yeah you won't be able to drop something in the in the in the plates um is um the the government should probably provide um houses for them which i know that um that, um, um is and i should be able to probably reduce it that's just all i can say okay yeah thank you um I think I feel like we should get some more people. Come and have a seat on the table of chat. This is okay. Well, we're we're put here for another little while. What, can I just ask you before you go? Okay. Uh, you're are you you've got one of these uh, 
I haven't got Grayson, one. Yeah. But what are you doing here? What's it all about? What's do you do you know about this? Are you part of this? No, so um, maybe explain it to Matt. Okay. What? Um, the program is like it's actually a global program that yeah. um talks about the, the ripple effect. Okay, it's actually themed the the ripple effect. Yeah. Looking about um gender issues. Um. Yeah. Um insecurity and other world um um issues right now and yeah. then the effect yeah. if good policies if good strategies are not put in place um i really enjoyed the session yesterday yeah. that um the former president of malawi yeah um dr joyce manda took and she, um, banda yeah. and she talked about um gender equality yeah and the um f um the gender bias in africa i'm actually from from nigeria okay and it's so horrible the way the girl child is treated. Right. Yes. If it continues this way in the next probably yeah. twenty to thirty years, I don't think um girls would have um good good or uh, equal rights with men. So good education, yeah. good policies, um good um and good governance structures would yeah. help to give women um um a good place in society. Right. I just finished um, 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 a session that had to do with uh, um, relating art yeah. and how art can deal with certain insurgencies in the world. Yeah. And I talked to myself, oh, that's, that's, that's actually a place that I've not actually thought about. Art is very beautiful, art is yeah. very inspiring. But um, I, I thought again about the Michael Jackson, We Are, yeah. we, we are the World yeah. song that he did with other musicians yeah. that had to respond to poverty yeah. in Haiti. And that was a very good one. But I asked myself, um, when, to what extent would artists be able to be artistic in some certain issues? Yeah. Um, they can be artistic to political issues, yeah. to a democratic government, they can be artistic to gender-biased societies, they can be artistic to economic issues, but how, to what extent have they been artistic to issues that concern religion? Yeah. That is like, something that everybody fears especially i'm sorry to say but especially the the um the um jihadist right if you say if you make any artwork of or if yeah. you make any peace against the muslims i'm yeah. sorry you would be so unsafe where where you are right. so to what extent can we um qualify the 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 impact yeah if there's any to any form of artwork that has right. really treated um jihadists um, yeah. Or any issue of um, religious insecurity. Right. So uh, it's, it's just. That's a big question. I yeah. mean, we can go. Do we want to yeah. go talk, discuss this question? Um, it's kind of up the whole way Tokyoki works. It's kind okay. of up to you. Because um, I, um, yeah. I don't have data right now. Yeah. But I can remember of a, um, I can remember a, um, a German director yeah. that directed um, um, a movie that had to talk about Islam. Right. And in Germany, there yeah. was this um there was this sorry yeah. in, i don't know if it's germany or netherlands i'm not yeah. very specific right yeah. right right, um, um, right now but he was stabbed five times on the street right after being stabbed five times there was a note that was stabbed to his chest to to actually condemn him right. for producing that kind of piece yeah i had of a time that um someone made um an art of the prophet muhammad yeah and it was in a very um um, insulting way, yeah. and that same person was killed. So, to yeah. what extent can we qualify artistic work to yeah. to to to, to yeah. solving religious issues? I guess that's a very very okay. huge right. question so, that needs to be answered. Yeah. So we're talking about art and religion. What do people think? I mean, uh, is, is there a con <laughs> is there a connection? Art and religion. Yeah. And, uh, um, and what about art about other people's religions? Is that the same as, as uh, right yeah? Now, um, yeah. The, I'm I'm not trying to be anti-Muslim um, Islam yeah. because I have so much beautiful Muslim friends. Yeah. But um, the major um, religion that the world is talking about today yeah. in relation to insecurity yeah. and terrorism yeah. is Islam, especially the um, Sunni and Salafist yeah. um, act of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, if if we are trying to measure it, I guess there would not be a huge um, impact because nobody today wants to do any peace that yeah. will offend a Muslim because of fear for his life. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, is it about offending or is it, I mean, 
is, is that the point of the artwork that's maybe controversial? Is it about causing offence? Okay. Or is it about something else? What is the point of the artwork, I guess, we're talking about? Um, can you make art about other people's religions? I guess that, that could be another way of putting it. Okay. And, yeah. People do, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's happens. it happens through history. <laughs> People yeah. making artwork about different religions, and yeah. even necessarily. But yeah, it, and there is uh, through history there has been a response to it. I guess yeah. it's it's just it's an ex it's it's an extreme in today's society that kind of thing. But it has happened in the past where it's been extreme. But yeah. it's in different religions. But I guess and and probably Islam as well. Okay, um, have you got a, a view on this? Can you make art about other people's religions? That's what we're talking about at the moment. Would you like to get involved? Um, Kyle, Matt, have you got a... On this one, I can s yeah. say yes, you can. Yeah. But that is because look at people like Michelangelo. Yeah. He was a Norse pagan, a.k.a. Viking. Was he? He followed the Norse pantheon, Odin, Thor, Loki, oh, really? yeah. Freya, just to name a few gods and a goddess yeah. that I can name off the top of my head. So Michelangelo wasn't a, wasn't a Christian? No. Okay. Nor was, it wasn't Michelangelo that done the pro Sistine Chapel and that's the one I was thinking of at the time. I think it is Michelangelo that did Sistine Chapel. It is. Yeah. So I was yeah. on the right one. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that that's an example of someone doing art about a different religion. Um, so it can be done. Um, Matt, have you got a view on this? <laughs> well, it, it's just be, everyone has a belief and art is something yeah. that's part of religious cultures. Yeah. And but that, I mean, yeah, but what yeah. we're talking about is art about other people's religions, yeah. not your own religion. Yeah, so it's not about I mean. necessarily what you believe, but what other people. Can we yeah. get involved in this? It's, a, it's Tokyo Ki, it's a freeform talk show. At the moment, we're talking about art and religion. Um, it's going to go online, but I mean, can we get involved in the conversation? We've got Rich, we've got Kyle, we've got Matt, we've got Rick. So, yeah. So let's just get names. For a so we've got Rich, Kyle, Matt, and Mikey. What's your name? Chloe. And. Brogan. And. Beth. Uh, so at the moment we're talking about we're talking about art and religion. I've got a GCSE in art. If you've got a GCSE, in it, what what did you make in your GCSE art? Um, I painted a picture of a bear. <laughs> did it have any religious connotations at all? <laughs> no, not really. Because I mean, what Rich has mentioned is that can you make? Should you be allowed to make? And what is the position of make? Say for example, if you were going to make some art about Islam, would you do that? in your art yeah, GCSE? Those. You would? Yeah. So well, you think that's, that is fine. Um, what about if it, that might cause offence to others? It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't no. Why? Because you shouldn't really care about other people's yeah. religion. Yeah. No. So, okay. Yeah, it's got a little few stains on it. Don't respect what they do. Yeah. Okay, just respect other religions. Are you off, Kyle? I've got, got to get going. Give us a final thought. To go back to a previous conversation, yeah. And this one's about the system we live in. We've been living in a broken system for far too long. Okay. The capitalist system's there to okay. cause inequality, hate. Yeah. And do you look agree at with this? the class system. You, you, I know. Yeah. At this stage in time. Yeah. Okay. And we're supposed to be living in a multicultural society. And that's where everybody's equal. Okay. But the class system, look at me, I'm white working class. You're black middle class from the dress sense, what? I'm guessing. So you're, okay, come and get involved with this, come and have a seat on the table of chat. But just say what? that. This is going into race, inequalities, but. I'll give, I'll say, give us a final thought before you um, go. Do you think it's a broken system? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Um, it could improve. How? Um, anything could improve. You okay. What, what's broken about the system? That's why, because Kyle thinks it's a broke. We live in a broken system, a broken world. I love Cobb. They got Cobb, bro. <laughs> yeah. So is it? So maybe Coventry is not that bad. Coventry is not all that bad. It's worse yeah. than people. Think of it. It's not that bad. I can deal with it. You mean it's it. better than people think? Of it. Yeah, it's better yeah. than people think. Okay. Any final thoughts, Coventry, no, the system? I'm all right. Okay. Um, 
Maybe we scared them off all this cut. Uh, rich, middle, uh, middle class, black um, middle class. Do you, uh, how do you see it? I mean, like, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, um, yeah. I don't think it's offensive. Yeah. But, um, I feel it's, yeah. to back to your question i think yeah. i feel it's a broken system yeah because um yeah. since we can't agree on one thing yeah. we all have our different perspectives yeah based on beliefs yeah. based on religion yeah. based on economic class yeah and whatever we can't we can't actually actually agree on yeah. on a particular truth and to yeah. the extent that we can't agree on the truth um yeah. You have your truth you have your truth you have your yeah. truth i have my truth based on our beliefs and when I contradict yours, if yeah. if it's if it's to an offence, you might take it up on me. When you contradict mine, if it's to an yeah. offence, I can take it up on you, and yeah. we just keep fighting or, or keep managing the system. So we yeah. all, I mean, can you have a system where we can have different truths, different beliefs, and still have a, a system that works? Do we live in a broken system? That's what we're talking about now. Come on, come on, give us a couple of minutes. Come on, have a, come have a seat. Come and get involved in this. We got Rich, we got Matt, and Mikey. A moment, we're talking. Come have a seat. We're, we're talking about do we live in a broken system? Okay. When different people have got different views, different viewpoints, they see things in different ways. They can see the same scene, but they see it in a different way. But how then do you have a system that actually works? Because everyone today has said it was a broken system. Is it? Come and get involved in this. England is broken. Yeah, but how do we? How to fix it is the question. So what's your name? I'm Chris. And Mr. Data GDR. David. Can I Jay. short that? Short on that? <laughs> David. David, Rich, and Matt and Mikey, and we've got Rick on camera. So can I just just start off by saying, do you think we live in a broken system? Do you think the country's broken? Because a, a lot of people have said this in the last few minutes that it is broken, but how to fix it? When Rich Rich is saying that people have got different view we've all got these different viewpoints that don't necessarily kind of gel. So how do we w live in that world? Is there a better way to do it? I think, um, um, you know, I'm a man that, uh, you know, yeah. I have faith. I think that the yeah. three main things that shape this life we live in, faith, hope, and love. Yeah. And I believe that, you know, it's very British for someone to be very cynical of others, you know, yeah. to hope the worst or see the worst in every situation. So I believe that, um, uh, perception change in terms of how you see things, how you take negative things, or how you take differences. You need to, you know, see them in a more positive light. Stop the cynicism yeah. Yeah. and hope for the best out of every situation. When you don't get that, so just know that it's going to work out some way. You so know? In, in a way, it's down to you to see the positive mm -hmm. sides. Exactly. Okay. No, in the words of You're a great man. Yeah. In the words of a great man, um, you know, you have yeah. to start with the uh, the man in the mirror. I'm starting with a man in the mirror. Yeah, you know, okay, that's what a great man said. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah um, I believe that the system isn't really broken, to be honest. Um, yeah. There are a lot of things that um, this country actually do try to promote um, that encourages positivity and encourages yeah. people to get out and yeah. um, reach their potential, such as um, job seeker allowances to find jobs, um, opportunities for people to volunteer, to make yeah. a positive contribution to society. So. Okay. Yeah, not necessarily. For me, I, I, I don't think... So you're saying... Broken. What's your name again, sorry? I'm Chris. Chris, that's yeah. right. So Chris is saying the system is not broken. Uh, other people are saying it's broken. Um, is it broken? Is it about the way you see it? Is it about this having this more positive... Are we cynical as British people? Um, what, what do people think? Yeah. Matt? Yeah. Matt, let me get to Max, hasn't he? <laughs> Hello. Um, right. Um, the, the system isn't as broken as it was anymore. It's yeah. just... You think it's, uh, it's, it's broken but less broken? Is that yeah, what it's just like... Um, it's all now about promoting more people. What I'm liking now about the new system is... Yeah. I'm, you're seeing more people with disabilities, more right. of colour, more right. of anything getting into right. work, and that's what I'm liking about the new system. But yeah. I don't like, as uh, we've had a few people on here, that the homeless are still being left yeah. behind in that system. Yeah. But I think that there has to be a point where you get one level, you yeah. get another level, and everyone comes together equally. But yeah. you've still got some people that just want Britain to be that small percent where it's just all them, not no one else, and... I right. just quite like that the system now is trying to encourage all equality, which is, I'm all yeah. for. Okay, so you think the system is actually somehow trying to change, it's trying to get better, it has got better. 
Um, Rich? Um, I want to see lovers um, not just accepting but sacrificing. You know, when I believe in something, I love it and I want to um, make sure that it doesn't die, so I sacrifice everything I, ca I, I have to right. make sure it lives. And that's right. just what the US is doing for democracy yeah. and that's what um, ISIS is doing for Islam. And once these two ideologies continue to clash, it continues to break whatever we call it, um, whether it's a balance or yeah. um, semi-balanced system, it continues to, to create um, a crack. The US would want to impose an ideology and, yeah. um, and, um, and um, ISIS would want to impose their um, ideology. Now that's a conflict between ideas and who, who, whoever can fight to the finish would actually probably win, win the day. And since yeah. each, since each um, side of, um, of um, the opposition would not want to relent, I guess um, yeah. it would continue to be a broken system. OK, yeah. so it's a, if we can't see each other's views, David, Chris? We can't see each other's views. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean what, basically, I don't know if you agree with this. Do you think this clash between, them, as he put it, between America and ISIS is about not about wanting to impose each other's ideologies? And if so, is it about then sacrificing that ideology for the sake of peace? Is that how you see it? Um, yeah, I do see it as a conflict of ideas, actually. Yeah. Um, I know the US have been particularly gu uh, guilty of um, yeah. misinterpreting um, maybe like um, missions and values of um, yeah. groups such as ISIS, yeah. um, which does in fact, lead to um, conflict. And, and as Rich, give us a final thought before you go. Sorry to interrupt, Chris. Give us a final thought before you go. Whoa. Just a quick one, just to throw something into the mix. Whoa. Let love lead. Let love live. OK, that's a quite good one. Sean, have you got a, a, you, have you got a point yeah. to make? Thank give us a so final much. thought as well. Final thought, um, the only thing you should ever do is love. Thank OK. You. But does that, what Rich is saying is that involves sacrifice, yeah. which is a new, to me, that's a slightly new concept. But sacrifice, anyway. Sacrifice, yeah. yeah. Um, Final thought, Chris? For me, um, if you really want to get something, you will have to sacrifice um, one thing. Yeah. But um, I believe that you should know yourself more than anything and keep, a, keep your values in whatever you want to do to try and achieve what you want to do. OK. So, yeah. all, all good. Uh, Good food for thought, I think. Sean, come and get involved. We need your wisdom. Thank you, thank you. Uh, what time is it? Yeah, well, yes. Yes, yes, yes. But you can, you can work from here, can't you? you just, just sit around this side. Uh, if you, we, we, it's going on that website if you, uh, if you want to see it later on, uh, peoplespeak.org.uk. Thanks very much for, for getting involved. Where do we take this conversation? It looks like it's just you and me, Matt, and Rick. Maybe Rick, we, Rick's put his headphones on just to keep his ears warm. It is a bit chilly out here. Um, we're sort of into our final few minutes here. Um, we need to get this... Com oh, we've got someone that's going to... Come and have a seat. Come and Two minutes. You've got a lovely lovely warm jacket and I can look at that and feel warm um, anyway where do we want to take this conversation we need some more people around the table um, Rick you're back any any thoughts on what's been said and this man's go he's gonna come and sit down I can feel it I can feel that there's it, I can, thank you thank you so this is Talkie Oki is a freeform talk show and we talked about all sorts of things today most recently we been talking about I don't know what we've we been talking about sort of like do we live in a broken system a broken world a broken country um, some people have said yes most people actually around the table anyway have said no um, we've got Matt we've got Rick what's your name Abdul Abdul and Mikey um, so yeah this is talking okay we can talk about these things or we can move it on to a different subject it's kind of up to you my job in the middle is just simply to come and come and have a seat do that sort of thing uh, trying to attract people into this conversation and spread. I mean, uh, yeah. do you guys feel it's a broken system? Um, okay. I do you know where yeah, everyone. Okay. What do you think? Do you think um, you, you were saying semi-broken, weren't you before? Semi-broken, but um, there's some good things. Yeah, some, it's some, evolving. I think yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, the system has evolved a bit more from the way it was probably back before even my time, like in the 60s, 70s, that where it's more people are getting equality in work and all that. 
even though there are some things that could be better with some people's views in the work system, like because you get some people that's that don't like you for your choice and who you'd want to love or who yeah. what your beliefs are. But I'm liking that everything's being dealt with and the system's all been changed. It just changes yearly. Yeah. But um, so it's kind of a bit like a operating system gets updated. <laughs> yes. Um, I just didn't like that. Sometimes when it comes to power yeah. or politics or anything like that in Parliament, now, it's all yes people really yeah. sometimes. And yeah. th- when you watch people on TV talk about what they want for this country, they never ask any normal people, what do we want? It's more right. about what their views and what they want. Okay, so it's not necessarily... Rick, broken system? I think or fixed system or evolving pe- system? People are, scared of, well, people are scared of change, I guess. <laughs> it's yeah. the thing that people don't... It, it's about, like, it's, so when change does try and happen, people resist it, and then it, that's why it sort of goes back and it takes... It, it does eventually get there, but it's just very slow because people are always trying to... Okay, so people, uh, slow, that's what I'm trying to mean. Resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 I mean, sometimes when just trying to think new things is quite tricky because yeah. people don't want to try those new things. They want to keep it as it, the way it is, in a way. I guess it's broken if you uh, it's broken for you, and I think for those. Uh, yeah, people, yeah. <laughs> people who feel marginalized and who feel like they've been had, um, they're gonna feel it's broken. Wasn't Brexit a vote yeah. against a broken system? Yeah. I mean, the Brexit is to me a sign that the system is is broken. Yeah. yeah. Some people feel like doing by leaving the EU that is. Breaking the system, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so it's a bit... We're breaking a broken system yeah. further, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Is that a bit like when you're a kid and you try to fix a radio or something like that and you just end up taking it apart and making it even worse? Is that that same sort of mentality? Hang on a second, Abdul, let me get this person. Come and get involved in this. Do we live in a broken system? Just yes or no? Broken system? What did, what did he say? He said thank you. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah, but it didn't, it didn't actually tell us whether whether he thought we lived in a broken. So so yeah, so we, it's like the radio that's broken. But, but the stakes are higher than a transistor radio being yeah. being yeah. broken. They're, it's like dealing with people's lives. And uh, if if anything, I mean the the election of Trump and yeah. everything that's happened. I mean, does that reveal a system that works or a system that's that's broken? Here's a man who is worth billions, is invested in global capital. It represents everything horrible about the system, and yet he becomes a representative. Of the, uh, of people's aspirations to fix a broken system, something's yeah. definitely wrong with yeah. this picture. Um, so this is Talkyoki, it's a pop-up talk show. We've got Abdul, we've got Matt, we've got Rick, I'm Mikey. At the moment, we're talking about do we have a broken system? Matt says it's kind of evolving, it's improving itself. There's always the system of, I guess. What don't system? get, yeah, don't get, yeah. What system? Don't get to. That's a good question. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and Abdul's saying basically. Are we trying to fix the broken system by breaking it even more? In the, in the case of uh, Donald Trump, I think you mentioned. So that's where we are right now. But um, I don't know if you've got any views on that. Do you, can I just ask you very quickly, do you think we have a broken system? don't think we have a broken system. No? You think it's a, it's a working country? It depends which system you're talking about. But one of the things do that Abdul... Do you, do you feel that any systems are broken? This is the question. And if so, I what are those? I think if um, things like Syria happening yeah. um, and Crimea and yeah. all of those things are happening and we're unable to help constructively yeah. do something about yeah. it, then yeah. that seems like yeah. a seems something's good. broken. Yeah. Come and have a seat. Do we live in a broken system? Okay. What do you think? Oh, do you, the, with this level of conjecture, you can't just leave us with that. Come on, come. More, yeah, we want, want a little bit more. Just give us a couple of minutes. Well, we didn't get your name. We've got Abdul, we've got Matt, we've got Andy. Rick. Andy. Andy, I'm Mikey. Um, so, with things like Syria, Crimea, you mentioned, we can't possibly, and we're not helping those people, we can't possibly say it's, it's not broken. I think you made a very good point, Abdul, before. It's like, it's broken for those, the system's broken for those who's not serving. Yeah, if you feel unserved by it, then there's something wrong. There's something wrong. You feel that, that it's yeah. broken. I think there's a lot of people in this country who feel that the institutions of power and yeah. capital don't, don't, do them, don't do them justice, don't do them right. 
Um, I think that's the case elsewhere as, uh, uh, as well. So I, I think, I think the, uh, systems work. They have yeah. functionality. Yeah. For whom do they work, I think, maybe is the yeah. more interesting yeah. question. Yeah. Okay. And I think if you were Putin, you'd begin to think the systems were great. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. It's working for him. Yeah. Sort of about in how the systems work. I don't know. I've not had a chat with him, but <laughs> yeah, or I, I mean, Trump. Uh, what's the matter? <laughs> the systems working well. I oh, is this working? My system's broken again. Um, anything on this side, Matt? Rick? Um, can we say we've got a functioning system when we've got the likes, all these things going on? Just, uh, yes and no, I guess. I mean. It, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a difficult one. I, cause I mean, it's working for some, it's not Yeah, yeah, exactly. Others, I, I totally basically. agree with that. Say that, this, that. That systems aren't broken, but the way that they're structured is profoundly unjust yeah. and unequitable and promote inequality on multiple levels. So in which case, the system is working. Yes, yeah. it just never said it was just. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, it yeah. is working. It's functional, it's, it's working. Yeah. You know. And like any ecosystem, it has to move and yeah. morph and grow new molds. Yeah, but it's not, it's not working on the basis of justice. Not for everybody, no. okay. but it is for some. Okay, yeah. some people get justice. Okay. Um, Matt? <laughs> Hello. Um, I'll just agree with them too. It's just... Um, <laughs> so, sorry, I want to get a final thought from you, Andy, because you've You've given so much to this over such a short space of time. Ha! Make the system work by um, attending to the needs of the people who feel that they aren't part of it. Okay. How do you do that? Listen to them. Okay. Collaborate. Co-create. Deliver to the needs of the people. And make sure that our politicians are held to account if they're not doing that. Okay. Here, here. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, you don't need my permission. You don't have. You, I'm, I mean, I'm really impressed that you're, you've come out here without any like arm covering, and you've stayed. It's like Canadian DNA. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Um, give us a final thought before you go, though. I, I, I agree with Andy, but I also think that that I yeah. think, I think for us as particularly for young people, I mean, the fact that we're here in the middle of a university, I think the, the fact is that. I feel that when I went to university, there were probably more serious questions being asked about systemic issues yeah. and about racism yeah. and inequality yeah. and marginalization. And I feel actually that the academy and the campus has in some ways become less politicized than it right. once was. And that's concerning to me because I think students by their yeah. very yeah. role as students should be questioning and, yeah. and sort of being at the, at, at the edge of things because this is the place you can. Because after this, you're yeah. thrown into the system and life responsibilities yeah. and all these expectations of you that global capital has that we all fall into the house and mortgage and, and all of that. But here is an opportunity where you can actually profoundly disagree and push yourself to the very edges of your belief system or the way that you think. And I, and I just don't think we, in those who are in the uh, in academia at the university yeah. and the academy take an opportunity to do that. Do so sorry, I know you wanted to leave, but just, why do you think that's changed? Why do I do think that there's been a lessening of, of kind of political consciousness uh, on the campus. And I think part of that is that we've seen a shift in universities away from, from thinking into courses and um, uh, programs which encourage the real world skills. So you have a lot, of, a lot of push towards very practical education, which I'm not saying is wrong, but along with that, there's, you know, where, where is the philosophy and literature uh, and art and politics and, and, and all of that. And, you know, when I went to university in Canada, we had to take political philosophy first year. You had to take philosophy 101. I had to take sociology 101. Those were things that really sparked my imagination because they asked fundamental questions about the way we live and the societies we live in. And that was sort of an entry point for, I think, deeper thinking. And I feel that that's missing now, unless you take a PPE or something, which yeah. now which then becomes an elite thing, right? Elite people take PPE because it doesn't really matter because they're going to become yeah. lawyers and so on because they're privileged. Yeah. Well, why should intellectually inquiry yeah. be the realm of the privileged student? Why, why can't someone be taking engineering here, which Coventry has an amazing engineering program, at the same time be taking courses on scientific history or philosophy or religion or, or, or thought? I think the two definitely go together. And yeah. what we want is we want engineers who are 
who are deep thinkers uh, as much as they are gr wonderful engineers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think our governments certainly want us to they want education to be very utilitarian and they want to instrumentalize the university experience. I think we've been seeing that all over the world. And I was seeing when I was a teacher in Canada, you know, as a high school teacher, you know, in the early 2000s, late 1990s, we saw the curriculum begin to move into those areas and it was a real shame. Yeah. Okay. I mean, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you later on at the, at the rising. Oh, yeah, no, no, we'll see you at yeah. The have Road. you got, have you got one of these? I do. Okay. Oh well. Uh, perfect. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you. I uh, hope you warm up a little bit inside. Um, well, yeah. yeah I, agree, I agree with what you said. It's yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was are we being discouraged to think? Is that? Do you think that's going on? Is there? A, are we being discouraged to think? Yeah. I, know, I felt when I went to uni that that's yeah. when I started like seeing things from different light like, a lot more and thinking yeah. about things a lot more, which I didn't have at school basically <laughs> or sixth form. Are we discouraging people to think, and that are we going to suffer the, the, I guess, suffer the consequences of that? Um, well, what Mr. Abdul just said, um, I do agree yeah. on. I've been looking for courses that are different because yeah. most of them do seem to be right. engineering and yeah. everything. And yeah. it's a shame because I loved history, but yeah. they scrapped it after the first year and when I was attending school. And yeah. then now it just feels like everything to do with that or around Britain, it's been pushed towards more IT or yeah, electronic it's all jobs. Very, very functional. Yeah, uh, it's just I want more history, more stuff that isn't always like I'm not interested mainly into cars. I'm more yeah. in the learning about where the yeah. countries come from, Versailles, yeah. Paris, yeah. all the great things. I mean, things. do you agree with what Abdul's saying though? Because there's a little bit of a, you know, he's sort of saying that young people are also not that interested in philosophy or politics or all these things? Um, there's a, I actually disagree with that because I yeah. know many people that really love that but they can't take it as a subject because the counselling yeah. have removed a lot of that from a lot of places, colleges and yeah. it's just such a shame because I would love to have done a course in history but they've, they've taken away that privilege and yeah. uh, giving it more towards so an So it's not necessarily the, the young people that are getting less interested, they're just being pushed away from those sort Yeah, because mainly I've yeah. seen like options for either courses on performing arts, courses on yeah. to car work, any other but history. And you've got people from like 90s, 80s, like teachers and that, that said history yeah. was their favourite subject. And yeah. I've never got to really experience that much yeah. besides Google is my history teacher. Okay. Google is your, it's probably my history teacher as well, to be honest. Um, always looking on Wikipedia in the pub. Um, you just hoping Wikipedia yeah. is right as well. Whoever's yeah. entered that Wikipedia well, thing I, has got I it right. I sort of trust Wikipedia. I don't really expect it to be wrong. Sometimes yeah. people can just change it at yeah, the last minute true, and something like that. And, and yeah. you, sometimes you spot things yeah. where people have just written something silly in there and we're waiting for someone else to yeah. work it out. Sorry, Coventry, we just littered Coventry. <laughs> um, okay, is it time now to get some final thoughts? Because I feel like the day, we're losing the day here. Uh, so maybe let's just get some final thoughts um, from, from you, Matt, from you, Rick, and maybe from, from myself. Stephen, give us a final thought. We're going to pack this up now. It's been an interesting uh, session. We've, we've heard about all sorts of things. Um, how's the things been going? We're rising. Yeah, you know, good. I think it's, it, it, you know, I think this this is what it's about. You know, we have to move out of our, our spaces are everywhere. There is no, if we say there's just safe spaces, then everywhere is dangerous. It's about us reclaiming every piece of pavement. And as you've done yeah. here in this cathedral, you have reclaimed for us this space. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, and we, we'll, uh, have you got one of these, Matt? We're going to be down here later on. There's all sorts of entertainment going on and stuff like that. Um, that's just down the road in FEA Fargo yeah. Village. Um, so we'll, there'll be a lot more going on. This is just the first session uh, of two of a double header we're doing today. Have, Rick, have you got a final thought? I think Stephen summed it up quite well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> think, yeah. Have you got a final thought, Matt? Um, just always be yourself and just let. Just don't let anybody push you around. Okay. Don't, s don't let anyone push you around. Stand for what you believe in. And uh, we're going to stand up now and we're going to drive to Fargo Village. So we'll see you there. Thanks very much. Hopefully see you there. Cheers, Matt.